Hi there and welcome to our video on some exam questions related to forces. Our first exam question states, the drug lift pulled the skier with a constant resultant force of 300 newtons for a distance of 45 meters. Use the following equation to calculate the work done to pull the skier up the slope. So work done is a form of energy, it is measured in joules. Force is in newtons and distance is in meters. Okay, now it says calculate the work done, it's worth two marks. So work done is going to be equal to the force, which is 300 newtons, multiplied by your distance, which is 45 meters. Okay, so you would just do 300 multiplied by 45, and that would get you an answer of 13,500 joules for two marks. Next question. A go car with a new design is entered into a race. The velocity time graph for the go car during the first 40 seconds of the race is shown below. Between which two points did the go car have the greatest acceleration? And we're given an option of A, B, B, C, and C, D. So A to B, B to C, or C to D. Now, the greatest acceleration is between A and B. Okay? And the next question says, give a reason for your answer. So a reason for our answer is that A to B, if we have a look at this now, it has the steepest gradient. And that's why it has the greatest acceleration. Okay, remember acceleration is the change in velocity divided by the time. So out of all of these lines on the graph, if we calculated the acceleration of lines A to B, it would have the greatest acceleration and that's because on the graph it has the steepest gradient so it says give a reason for your answer is because line lines a to b has the steepest you could have said slope or you could have said gradient okay and that would have given you two marks one for this multiple choice one and one for giving a reason for your answer next question part of a bus route is along a high street the distance time graph shows how far the bus traveled along the high street and how long it took now the question says between which two points was the bus traveling the slowest and you need to put a tick next to the correct answer in the box a to b c to d or d to a now if it's traveling the slowest well if it's traveling the quickest it's going to have a steeper gradient if it's traveling the slowest it's going to have a lower gradient so if we have a look at this on the graph between which two points is the line the most gentle slope and that is between lines d to e it, it has the most gentle slope of the graph so your correct answer it's traveling the slowest at d to e and our next question says give a reason for your answer it's because d to e has the lowest gradient okay and that would get you two marks one for that and one for here next question the person takes their dog for a walk the graph shows how the distance from their home changes with time which part of the graph A, B, C or D shows them walking the fastest? Now, when they're walking the fastest, when there's, when we've got distance um, and time on the axis, we know that it's going to be the one with the steepest gradient. So, which one's walking the fastest? Well, we know it's going to be B. And the reason for our answer is going to be that B has the steepest gradient has the steepest gradient or you could have said slope again okay and that would get you two marks one for that and one for this next question the diagram shows the horizontal forces acting on a swimmer the swimmer is moving at a constant speed force t is 120 degrees so the force which we're given over here we know that's going to be 120 degrees. Okay, so 120 Newton, sorry. 
what is the size of force D? This force over here. Now we know that the swimmer is moving at constant speed and if it's moving at constant speed, we know that the opposing forces in the opposite direction should be equal. That means the resultant force will be zero and so the force D is going to be 120 newtons and that would get you one mark. Okay, if we carry on now, our next question, part of a bus route is along a high street. The distance time graph shows how far the bus traveled along the high street and how long it took. Now the question says the bus travels the slowest between points D and E. As you can see, it has the lowest gradient. How can you tell this from the graph? Okay, and we've just explained that. So D to E has the lowest, you could have said slope, or you could have said gradient. Okay, and that's gonna give you one mark. Next question, between which two points was the bus traveling the fastest? And you need to put a tick next to the correct answer. So if you go back over here, which um, between which two letters are the bus traveling the fastest? It's the one with the steepest gradient. Now the two possibilities are A and B and C and D, but you can see that A to B is a steeper line. If you were unsure, you could actually do distance divided by time or work out the gradient and to see which one was the largest, okay? So A to B is gonna be the correct answer for one mark. There is a bus stop in the high street. This is marked at point B on the graph. What is the distance between point A on the distance ta uh, distance um, graph and the bus stop? So for the, um, the bus stop is on the high street. It's marked point B um, on the graph. What is the distance between point A and the bus stop? So point A and point B. Now point A starts at zero and point B ends at 200. The difference is 200, so the distance needed is gonna be 200 meters, okay? And that's gonna give you one mark. How long did the bus stop at the bus stop? Show clearly how you work out your answer, it's worth two marks. So at the bus stop, at B, how long did it stop? There's a flat line from 40 seconds all the way to 60 seconds. That's a difference of 20. So you would do, as you're working out, 60 seconds, subtract 40 seconds, and that would get you an answer of 20 seconds, which would get you two marks for that answer. Next question, a horse and rider take part in a long distance race. The graph shows how far the horse and rider travel during the race. What was the distance of the race? Now the race finishes there, well, what is the distance of the race? It's at 60 kilometers. You're going to just draw a horizontal line from there and that would get you an answer of 60 kilometers. Okay, for one mark. Final few questions now. How long did the horse and rider um, take to complete the race? So they finished at this point over here. How long did they take to complete the race? We can just draw a vertical line downwards over here and that would be at five and a half, so 5.5 hours. So you can just, for one mark, write 5.5 hours. Okay. Next question, what distance did the horse and rider travel in the first two hours of the race? Again, you go to the two hours, draw a line up and draw a line across they traveled 30 kilometers in the first two hours of the race and that would get you one mark how long did the horse and rider stop and rest during the race well if we look at this now they only stopped for once between b and c they stop at 2.5 and 3 so they stop 0 0.5 which is half an hour which is 30 minutes so they stop for 30 minutes Okay, now, not counting the time it was resting between which two points was the horse moving the slowest. Again, it's the one with the lowest gradient. So it will be this from point D to point E as it's moving the slowest. So we can just go down 
and we can write between points D and E. And the reason for our answer would be that it ha um, D to E has the lowest gradient or you could have also said slope okay and that would get you two marks for your answer and that is it for this video thanks for watching i hope you liked it and one last thing please subscribe hit the like button and the notification bell